Hi there, Eric here. This video we're going to talk a little bit about creating Google Meets for the purposes of breakout rooms, meaning creating a place for students to have group discussions or pair work that is separate from the Google Meet that is created when you create your Google Classroom. So you want to create additional Google Meets uh, for the purposes of students jumping into them uh, to have uh, group discussions or pair work or whatever you, you uh, have for your classes. So let's go to Google Classroom first. All right, here we are at our uh, course page. And on the top of the stream, we have our Google Meet. And this is the Google Meet room that is attached to our classroom, uh, this particular class, this course, which is open all the time, you can hop into it. So you want to create an additional one, uh, or maybe two or three, or depending on your needs, uh, that your students can also hop into uh, for a some sort of a pro um, activity. Right, so it works very similar to the way that you create or schedule courses face-to-face -face time with your students, and you'll do that through Google Calendar. So I'm going to go to Google Calendar, Calendar now. All right, and how I should explain how Google Meets usually works when you set up that meeting, uh, first meeting. Let's say I want to create one now. Um, I'm going to call it class one. This is just an example. And I'll add video conferencing. Boom, it creates a Google Meet link. And you can add participants, and it'll send that out to students. Great, you've created a new Google Meet for students. But how this normally works is that as soon as this room is not occupied for any given amount of time, I think it's it's only a few minutes, I think, five or ten minutes, that that link will dissolve, that room will disappear. So if you try to use the same link to go back to it, um, you'll get an error. You have to start a new link, and if you had other participants, you have to send them the link, and that could get a little messy. Uh, so what you want to accomplish is much like you have for your Google Classroom, some static link that always works, and it works every week. And there's a little trick to that. So I'm going to call this class Zimbabwe uh, because why I'm, why I'm doing this is that I've created, to go back to the reason why we created a, um, a, a Google website is that I've created a bunch of these uh, for a bunch of breakout rooms and I've named them countries. So in this, I created a Google site with a bunch of links to Google uh, Meets uh, from A to Z in the alphabet, and the last one is Zimbabwe. I'm just going to add that to the, uh, this list of links. So when students go into this website, they'll just click on the flag. I can tell them, hey, you two are in Breakout Room France. You guys are in Hungary. Um, and Or it could just be A to Z. It's very very easy to understand. So And, and this is this great hall um, room. Um, I've made for all of us to use. You can schedule time on this and use this as for if you don't want to create your own as well. Another video on that coming soon. Okay, so going back to Google Calendar, um, I started a new Meet. I'm going to hit more options, more options, right? So I have my link here. I'm going to call this Zimbabwe. Now, like I said before, uh, Google Meet will dissolve that link as soon as it's unoccupied for any given amount of time. But the way to get around that is very simple. You're going to make it a repeating event, meaning it's going to go every day or once a week or what have you. So I'm just going to hit this all day, repeats daily. So now this is going to be an event in your calendar that repeats indefinitely. And therefore that link stays active as soon as people hop out and hop back in. A couple of things to remember, you can add guests to this now uh, to send them invites to it, 
but you probably don't want to do that if these are breakout rooms because different guests will be using different breakout rooms and different days or the students might get jumbled up or the sub students are absent. So my opinion is, is not to add any guests to the breakout rooms. Um, you can add a description and allow students to invite their friends and other students um, if you want to be more strict and not allow students to invite other people into their rooms. Sometimes it's probably more advantageous to let them do that because they help each other out to know where other students are and where other students are supposed to be and they send invites to each other. Uh, but I'm going to turn these off for this purpose. I'm going to add this to the Great Hall and I'm going to set this to private so only I can see it in my calendar. I'm not sharing that out to anybody. I'm going to click Save. And I'm going to go down here and I should have a Zimbabwe somewhere here. Where's my Zimbabwe? Oh, there she is. There it is. Zimbabwe. I've got my link. I copied my link. I'm going to go back to my classroom. I'll simply add that link as a hyperlink to my Zimbabwe classroom. And boom, I'm going to republish this website. And now I have, I did this 26 times, and I have 26 breakout rooms all connected to a website. So when I do my class, maybe I'd hop into our regular Google Classroom during class, and then I say, everybody, let's go to the Great Hall, and I'll maybe first create a um, I'll tell students what, what groups they're in or what country uh, breakout room they're in. You could also create a spreadsheet with, with just the links and names. That could also be just as easy to do. So you get your link and you get a group of names and you just make a Google Doc or a sheet to let students know where they were and you share that the day of the class. Also just as easy. Okay, that's creating a breakout room for your Google Classroom using Google Meet and Google Sites. Hope you enjoyed that one. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.